Hello, I am Dario Denhoff from the technical team here at Envimet, and I welcome every one of you to today's live demo. Today will be all about our model editor Spaces. So let's head over to Spaces. First of all, when you want to create a new area, we will answer everything what you need to keep in mind if you want to create a new area. So let's head over to start and edit area slash create a new area. And here we have multiple options. The options that are relevant for us are the model location, the model geometry, the default settings, and to a certain extent, the description and copyrights. The georeference, uh, the georeference and DEM level, as well as the nesting grids aren't relevant for us today. Um, so let's begin with the model location. Why is it important that we set the model location at the location you want to simulate at? It's important because you need to define when the sun rises and sun sets, because Envimet will calculate that automatically. So if we go to find location here, another window will open. Per default, it's Essen because Envimet is located in Essen, Germany. So let's go to, let's say, San Francisco. And we can search through two APIs, either geonames.org or Google. And for my purposes, I would use, just use geonames. It's uh, the recommended uh, search API and let's search. And here we get a lot of options. We will just take the first one. And here we can uh, take a look if the location roughly matches. So longitude minus 84 degrees, seven minutes and latitude nine degrees north and 59 minutes. That's right. So let's select the location. Once we have the location selected, we can see that the latitude, longitude, and the reference time zone have changed. This is important, uh, especially the reference time zone is important because the reference time zone sets uh, the preliminary um, times. So when does the sun rise? When does the sun set? So if you don't set your model area to the correct location and um, you start your simulation at, let's say, 5 a.m. in the morning, but you have the wrong reference longitude, you might run into issues regarding the sunrise and sunset times. So it is of vital importance that you use the correct location. We can also change it back if we go to, let's say, Madrid. I would search again. I would set the location and the reference longitude will be automatically set. The next option is the model geometry. When you create a model, you need to think about how large your model should be. So if you have, let's say, a model area you want to simulate that is one kilometer by one kilometer uh, in the horizontal axis, so 1,000 meters by 1,000 meters, you need to Think about how high you want to, yeah, how high the resolution you want to be, uh, you want to have. So, if we set the grid size to two meters by two meters by two meters, so, well, the horizontal size two by two meters, you would need 500 by 500 grids to simulate or to create a model area with the size of one kilometer by one kilometer. For simulations of that size, we would, would recommend using a grid size of three meters because you still have a good resolution, but you will save a lot of calculation time. Because once you've reduced it, you uh, once you've increased the grid size, you can reduce the amount of cells you will use. So by three meters, we need 333 by 333 grids. And that would also lead to a model area 
the size of one kilometer by one kilometer. For our demonstration purposes, this is way too large. I will create a model area with 100 by 100 grids with a grid size of two meters by two meters. Now, the next important thing is that you think about how high your highest building will be within the model area. So if you have a building that if the highest building is, let's say, 24 meters high, um, you can start to save atmospheric cells by enabling telescoping. The telescoping will lead to increased grid cell, vertical grid cell sizes um, after a certain point you define. So if, let's say, a building is 24 meters high, you can start the telescoping at 25 meters and increase every subsequent grid cell above by, let's say, 15%. Another important option you need to take into account is to split the cell, the lowest cell to the ground into five subcells. Why do we have that option? Well, as humans spend 99% of our time on the ground level. So some, if, if you want to make a microclimatic analysis, you would be interested that the highest accuracy is near the ground. So we have the option to split the cell in to, um, into five subcells. It is important to keep in mind, if you have a model resolution of one by one by one meter, do not enable the splitting because that will lead to instabilities within the model. If you have two meters resolution, you can use splitting uh, and everything above two meters will be just fine. So once we have the model geometry, we can go over to the default settings and we can set the default wall and roof material. And for our purposes, we just leave the default settings, but we could also change it that every building is every building with its walls is made out of brick walls or something like that. But let's leave it at default. And another thing you can do if you share your model areas to colleagues or something like that, you can change the model description. So here we can put in this is a model that has been built during the live demo. And then we can create the new empty area. OK, here we have a problem with the default settings. I need to go to the default wall and select it. And then we can create an empty new model area. Let's save it first, because I will take a look at you uh, uh, with you at the model area within the text editor. So we can save the model area as model live demo. And then we will open it within the text editor. Recommended as Notepad++. I will pull it over here. And here you can see the model description which I wrote, this is a model that has been built during the live demo. Here you can see the model geometry, 100 by 100 by 25, with a resolution of 2 by 2 by 2. We have telescoping enabled, so it is set to 1. If it would be set to 0, the telescoping would be disabled. The same applies for splitting. Vertical stretch is how much will uh, the cell above when, when you uh, enable telescoping be larger compared to the cell below, and at which height does the stretch start. Here you can see the grid. This is the, we are currently in a 2.5 dimensional model. So 
Here you can see the grid, which you can also see here. It's completely empty. So next, we talked about the telescoping. It is important that we take a look at our model area or entry model area as an overview. So you can go to edit and I will do that again. You can go here to edit model inspector. And here you can see all the relevant information regarding your model area. For simulation purposes, it is recommended that the model area is twice the height of the highest building. So if we have a building at, with a height of 24 meters, it should be at least, let's say, 50 meters. We have a height of 92.7 meters, which is more than enough, which is perfect. So our settings are good. Here you can see the, the vertical stretch. So you can see the first five cells, because we have split them, are in 20 centimeters, 60 centimeters height, 1 meter, 1.4 meters, etc. And above 2 meters, we will go to 3 meters height, 5 meters height, 7 meters height, etc. And here you can see the effect of splitting. Here the cells are a size of 2 by 2 meters. And the next cell is already 2.3 meters high. And at the very top, the largest cell is 10.7 meters high. This saves a lot of time when you're trying to simulate an area. So this is all this is always a good option that you can choose if, if you have a model area um, that needs to run fast. Okay. Now is the question how do we go about to set buildings? So we need to go into the buildings folder and per default, the add option is selected. And if we want to create a building with a height of 24 meters, you will need to go here and edit building geometry. And here you can set it to 24, the top side of the building. And then you can go either with a pen size of one by one grid. So if I click here, one grid cell will be filled with the building, or I can go with a pen size of two by two, and I will click and create a building with four cells at a time. You can either click single or you can also click and hold and create a building that way. Then let's take a look in the 3D view. But keep in mind, we are always still editing in 2.5D. So we all only see a rendering of the model area. Because if I place a building right here, um, it will go always to the, the defined top height. So let's remove it again. And save the model, because I, I will show you in the text editor how the changes affect the file. So let's go to 2.5D and save the model. And here we can see it has been saved right now. And if we open it again in Notepad, you will see that a building has been created here. If I go, let's say, here and place a 10 and another 10 and a 10 here and another 10 here and save the model area, nothing has changed in spaces because the model area has been loaded into your RAM. So if I open it again, model live demo, you will see that another building has appeared that I didn't create in spaces itself. This is just, as, uh, just an example that you could theoretically edit your model area in the text editor, which would be extremely tedious, which is why we created spaces. But just to show you how the file functions. It's at, at the end of the day, the entire model area is 
the large text file. So let's go about and remove the building and zoom in again and take a look at it in 3D. So it is still just a 2.5D model, but we can take a look at the grid cells. And here, if we zoom in, the controls for 3D, by the way, are uh, with the mouse wheel, you can zoom in or zoom out. If you hold shift and move your mouse, you will move throughout the area. And if you hold control and move your mouse, you will be able to take a look around the model area. So here you can see the cells that have been split at the bottom. And now we can also take a look at the soil which has been placed per default. So here in the option, uh, in the upper bar, you can show or hide the soil. And we have a lone standing building. We could also digitize a street that is going to the building. So we need to go to soil and surface. And let's say we go to roads and pavements and select the asphalt road. And here you will see a preview of your cursor, where your cursor is located. And again, just like with buildings, you could either do a single click and place a single cell with Asphalt Street, or you can click and hold, and also hold in the other direction to, let's say, do a two by two street. And similar to here, and we've just built a street. We need to save the changes. We can override it. You get, um, a version uh, a warning that you would override it. In our case, it's OK. It is recommended that if you do iterations of your model, you will save it as a separate model. So if you try out something uh, in your model area and it doesn't work, um, you can't reword it once you've saved the file. So it is important that you manage your, your model areas. All right. This is everything from the basics in 2.5D. We go back. If you have rendering problems, by the way, the, the rendering is done through OpenGL. If, 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 you go, uh, if you switch between the 2D view and the 3D view, and um, in the 3D view, nothing appears, you will need to move your mouse, and then the model area will get rendered again. Another important point for us is to place um, trees. So let's go over here and let's place, let's say, uh, an oak. And here you can see a preview how the crown of the tree um, would be spanned through the model area. So we can place a tree here and another tree here and another tree here. This is pretty nice. So let's save the model area. And in that case, I will do an iteration. So I will save it with trees. And if I want to go back to the model area that doesn't have any trees, I can open the area input file and select the file that doesn't have any trees. In that case, it saved the street because we saved it before, but we don't have any trees. So you could go into the buildings. We, we, we discussed it that we set a default model, uh, a default material when you build buildings. But maybe you want to change it up. You want to change the walls and roofs of this building. To achieve that, we will go into the 2.5 or uh, in the 2D version. And here we can go to materials. You will see the preview. This is the wall material and this is the roof material. Let's, let's change the wall material to, let's say, burnt bricks. So select it and then double click it. And as a roof, we will do a, a glass roof. So we will do glass bricks, 
double click again. Then we need to select the building to set the materials. So we go to select building, click on the building. And once, you once you've clicked on the building, the option tools for building number one will appear. You can click here and there you get separate options. We can apply the materials. Let's do that. But we could also remove the building as a whole if you don't want to remove it one by one. Um, we could also apply same as with materials. We can apply the greenings. So let's first take a look at the buildings. If you want to deselect it, just go to add. And then we go into the 3D mode again. And here we will see by the changing of the colors, we have brick, a brick wall throughout the whole building and glass bricks on top of it. So far, so good. Let's say you want to add single windows or just add a single facade with greenings. How would you go about that? For that, you will need to go into the full 3D mode. So where every cell is saved as a separate cell. So let's go to edit and then convert to detailed design. There will appear a warning. And the thing is, if you create, if you've converted to 3D and want to revert back to 2D, you will lose a lot of information regarding the materials. So you need to keep that in mind. So we are in the 3D mode. And now we can add, change the edit mode. So at the moment, we create a whole facade, as you can see by the green preview. But also, we could change individual segments. So once we do that, the options for, for the building geometry, so the height and the bottom, um, will be grayed out. Because we can only change, at the moment, the, the single materials. So let's go ahead and zoom a in a bit and then we could say okay we want to place some um some glass panels uh into the building so we will select the wall material and go over to glass and say clear float glass and once we do that we can go here into the building and click and click and click again. And you will see we just digitized single cells, which is great. You could also uh, click and hold again. And um, let's say we want to add a facade greening uh, to the brick wall. So let's go back. We select the brick wall and select a facade greening. Let's say we take um a greening with a sandy substrate and here by the changing of the color you can see that we created some greening if you want to add the greening up until the bottom of the building you will need to create uh, digitize it for every single subcell um, this is just due to uh, that the cell has been split so if we want to save it as a 3D model, we can already go ahead again and save model as. And now let's save it as model live demo, but with a tag that says 3D. So now we have various model areas, one in 2.5D and one in 3D, and we can switch between them. If, if we wanted to, because, well, it, it's always useful if, if you run into some problems that you can revert back. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I can see uh, already some questions. How does this link to QGIS? This is a great question. Um, you need to keep in mind uh, if you are someone who works with QGIS, 
if you export a model area from QGIS to NVMet, uh, the changes you will make in NVMet will not apply to the, the QGIS model. So these are separate, separate model areas. Um, this is an important thing that you need to keep in mind. But a great question. Paula Amelung asked, why is there a special 3D slash detailed design mode? Could it not always be 3D if that is better for editing the facades in detail? Yes, that is a great question. Um, we have created it because um, not everyone will need to do detailed designs. If you look, want to take a look at a broader area, let's say of one by one kilometer and want to analyze larger changes, the changes you will make to the facades from the different buildings won't have a great impact on your simulation. So if, if you want to analyze, let's say, um, the southern tip of Manhattan, it is, it is not recommended that you do it in 3D because it needs a lot of space uh, in your model area. The model area gets more complex the more um, geometry you add, which increases the simulation time. This is why we have for each case the the more a bit simpler method where you um, create buildings in 2.5D, or if you want to take a closer look at, let's say, a, a subset of buildings and the effects of the changes of, of the materials, then the 3D mode is for you. I hope that answered it. Is it still necessary to close the hole, holes, single empty cells and buildings for a stable simulation? If you mean that we have holes in here, buildings at that size don't need closed, uh, don't need to be closed up. But if you, let's say, create a building we, we do that in 2.5D. If you create a building um, that is like that, let's just quickly remove it. Um, if you create a building like this, that might lead to instabilities because this is a single cell of two by two meters horizontally. And this will most likely lead to wind speeds of zero meters per second or close to zero meters per second um, which can lead to yeah large instabilities within the model so depending on the size of the hole um, you will need to either close it or don't close it another important thing you you can you can do is if we go into 2.5d and open I, I will show it in in the 2.5d um, version if you go to the building and want to create an underpass um, you can do that as well so this would let airflow go into uh, your your closed uh, closed up cell so another option would be that you create a building again i will do that so now we have a, the, the small tube-like building again. But you could create an underpass if you go to bottom of building or element in meters and let's say set it to a height of five meters and go to add again. You will see two numbers in the 2D view. So 24 is top and five is the underside. So if we take a look at it in the 3D rendering, you will see that we have created an underpass. So it always, it always depends on the building you are trying to create. So you will get a feeling you can might as well run some testing simulations um, to get a feeling for it. But generally, a single cell wouldn't be recommended to be left open. If it is multiple cells, uh, like in this case, you can leave them open. I hope that answered it. There's another question. 
What if I realize that I have chosen my model area too small? So I realize after the simulation process that the buildings are too close to the edges of the model area. Can I adjust it afterwards? That's a great question. Um, if you've already run your simulation, then you would need to rerun it, but you don't need to rebuild your entire model area. Um, if you go to edit and I've built my building close to the border of the model area. Um, you can go to edit and click on add empty cells at borders. And there you will see the north, east, south, and west border. And let's just add another 10 cells. At the top, we don't need to add anything because that is great for us already. So we can add these cells. And here you can see the cells have been added. So you could add the empty cells to the border, but you would need to rerun your simulation. So another important thing to keep in mind is that to run a stable simulation, you would need to leave space at the border, which is why we also have added the, the option to add empty cells at the border um, because you need to leave at least the height of the model area, uh, the, the height of the building closest to the border in, in the horizontal uh, extension to, to your um, inflow border. Because if you build too close to your model uh, area border, um, I can show you the, the outline of the model area. Well, here it ends. And if the building, let's say the, the wind comes from this side, and if the building is too close to the inflow border, this will lead to instabilities or even crashes within the simulation. So recommended is at least five to 10 cells. The best would be that if, uh, if you leave at least the height of the building closest, or even double of uh, the height of the closest in the horizontal um, extent. Are there any other questions? At the moment, it doesn't seem. I will. I will just leave the Q and A open still. And another great thing uh, I would recommend if, if you're getting uh, started with NVMet is uh, you can watch the Getting Started series or even the Deeper Dive, uh, the Unfolded series. And for tips, if, if you don't want to, to go through, through longer tutorials, we also have a quick tip series you can see on our channel um, where the functionalities of options like Add Empty Cells at the Border uh, are explained in short videos. That is also highly recommended to watch if you have some specific problems. All right. It doesn't seem that there are any other or any further questions. And with that, I would say let's close it here. Half an hour, a good time. And I will see you in the next stream, or my colleagues will see you in the next stream. And yeah, have a nice day.